We'll be talking today about tips and tricks for managing instructors. And things we'll be discussing are creating instructor accounts and we'll be looking over what their standard permissions are for an instructor. And then how to you can have your access reduced for instructors, how you can increase the access for your instructors, uh, what contract instructor pools are, and how you can use them, and then some tools you have for scheduling instructors all thrown in there. Okay, so let's go out and take a look. First, we're going to take a quick look at an instructor profile. So this is one that has been created. I'm looking at it as an operations manager. And if I go in and edit, you can see you're just going in on the basic information tab here. You're just going to fill in any of the required information, like the first name, last name, primary email, username, and when you're creating an account, it would also have the password. It's going to default to your organization, but if you have access to other organizations, you can assign access here where that user belongs. You want to make sure you have the right time zone for the user. Down here at the very bottom for instructors, you can check the has bio. And what that's going to do is add a little tab right over here. And you can put in information about that person or they can put it in about themselves. Say what company they're from, what their title is, uh, give a little background on themselves in, and credentials that they have. This then can be added to a course. And when it's added onto the course profile, it will show at the bottom of that course. And it will also show on any class that the course is used for and also any self-paced training course assignment. It's most helpful probably for webinars or a course that is only taught by one person in a class because you don't need to have presenters showing up that don't align with the instructor you have. But it's really helpful in self-paced training if you have information to present about the people that are talking in the course. Let's go back into our instructor profile. And the other thing that a, an instructor needs to have is the instructor role. And all of our users get the basic user role, but our instructors need to have the instructor role assigned to be able to have the additional access that they need. Let's take a look then. If you are creating a user, you can create an instructor from this account, from this uh, create user link, but it does not add that instructor role. We also have a create instructor link over here on the instructor tile, and it automatically adds that role, so you don't have to worry about anything other than adding the uh, information you want on the basic information tab. So that's a helpful little thing for you. Let's take a look as an instructor at what they can and cannot see. Okie doke. An instructor like an operations manager, when they first log in, are dropped on the site administration page. You can see that as an instructor, they do not have as much access as you would have. You have like six items that they can access. One of the most important things they can access is courses. And when they go to find courses, if you've got your instructor set up like a standard instructor, uh, they're going to be able to see all the courses that are available to your organization. And when they're looking at those courses, they can do things like open a course. And when they open that course, they can um, look for classes that are scheduled against that course if they want. They can add a bookmark. So if this is something I want to come back and study later, I can add a bookmark for it. If I do that, you know, the place I can find that bookmark is on my current training page. And when I scroll all the way down to the bottom, it adds a bookmark for me down here and I can find the courses that I'm interested in taking there. If I go back down here, um, any activities in the, in the course, I can take at any time. I can launch the labs at any time. I just need to come in and click on the lab name and then I can launch it from the, the next page. So they have the access 
to all the courses that are available to your organization. They have the access to go in and uh, look at the labs, prepare those uh, all the content in the course way ahead of time at any time that they, they want. Now, another thing that they have access to see are classes. So if I come in and click on find classes, and I'll just do a search for the future ones. I can see the entire class schedule as an instructor. I can see um, any class that's been scheduled. I can add output options for end times and that kind of thing. I can see who's instructing other classes. And I can see my own class. And at this point, I get the link for the roster because I'm the actual instructor that is teaching that class. Now, What's the difference between a class that I'm instructing in terms of access and a class that someone else is instructing? Okay, so this virtual meeting class is the one that instructor Jane, who I'm a lot in as, is teaching. And this class, D class, is being instructed by Laura, who and I'm logged in as instructor Jane. So you can see immediately that I have access to a bunch of different links, and there are no links available here at the top of the class. One of the things I can access from here is the roster. I can take a look from here and see all the students that are registered for the class and what their enrollment status is. I can do some different things with them, like issue badges. I can send an email to, to the students from here. I have a pre-class checklist I can look at, I can print an assignment sheet, I can print completion certificates. And even though I have the names highlighted here, I actually don't have access to see any user accounts. So if they need, they're having trouble logging in and they actually have, are using the TMS for authentication and not an outside authentication provider, the instructor can from the roster here on this little lock they can go in and tell the person their username or change their username. And also they have access to change the passwords for those users so they can help them get logged in. So I have quite a bit of access there. Let's go back to details. One of the other things that I can do, or two of the other things I can do, one is to upload files and download files and make them available to students through the class. I can also monitor labs, which gives you an gives the instructor an over-the-shoulder view of what a student is doing in an active lab instance for that class. So if anybody is has an, a lab open, they can come to monitor labs and they can watch what they're doing step by step as they do it. So that's one of the nice things about our lab monitoring. If I look down a little further as the instructor for the class, I have a um, a direct line for our support, our help desk, is available to me, but as I'm not the instructor, it doesn't show in the other class. I can also see things like, um, I can't see how many students are in this class, I can't see who's enrolled in the class, but over here I can see the available seats, I can see the people that are actually enrolled, and both of us have access, in either one of these, I have access to all of the activities in the class I'm not assigned to, I have to open the lab like I would in the course. Our instructors have access to launch labs anytime, so if it is a course they have access to, they can, they can go and launch that activity. Let's take a little bit of a look at reducing access for a user. And you might want to, why might I want to, reduce access? Some organizations don't like their instructors to be able to see the classes that other instructors are teaching. They don't want them to be able to uh, go in and see what someone's been scheduled for and perhaps have a conflict because of that. So we can change access to reduce the access, the standard access for instructors for you. And the way we do that is through the org hierarchy. So right now, my instructor that I was just showing you has their user account in Career Rocket, and that gives her access to see the classes and all the courses that belong to Career Rocket. I also have a different instructor who is set up in this Career Rocket Instructors, and they're a child organization to Career Rocket. They still have access 
to the courses that belong to Career Rocket, but they can't see the classes because all the classes are scheduled up at the Career Rocket level and they will be able to see it. So let's take a look, quick look at it. Okay, and this is Allison. Say hello to Allison. Uh, the organization she belongs to here is Career Rocket Instructors. I'm going to impersonate her really quickly and go out to the site administration. And I mentioned that because it's a child organization, she still has access to see and access all the courses that are in here. She can launch the lab. She can do all of that kind of thing, just as the other one could, uh, just as Instructor Jane could. But when we come over to find classes, she won't see any classes at all because all of the classes are scheduled at the parent level and she is in a child organization. Another way that you can reduce access or you can have us reduce access for you because we need to do this for you um, and you can open a support ticket to have this uh, kind of access limits limitations place and get those organizations set up. The other way that the other thing that some organizations don't want is for all the instructors to have access to their their course materials or their labs, especially when they have proprietary labs and they want to only have a an instructor be able to access a lab based on the class they're teaching and not have access to everything. So I do also have an instructor set up for this. And this is going to be Instructor Boom. We'll impersonate him. And you can see he is in the outside organization, Demo Centers for Rocket Instructors. And when I go in here, he again won't be able to see any courses because we've denied him access to courses. Find classes. He can't see any classes at all because there are no classes scheduled at that organization level. And for both the Allison instructor and my Boone instructor here, the two, they can't get to uh, classes from find classes. So how can they get to their class that they're assigned to is a, an important question. Um, if you have the calendar link on the site navigation up here, that will open your instructor calendar for whoever you're signed in as. Um, so I'm signed in as or impersonating Boone, so I'm getting Instructor Boone's calendar here. And when I scroll down, I can see the classes I am assigned to teach, and I can open that class from there, and then I can take all of that material and prepare for it. So as soon as an instructor is added to a class, they can access that class and, and start preparing the labs if they don't have access to the course. There's an additional place where an instructor can get to the to their calendar, and that is by going to their user profile. And they scroll down here, and they have some of this instructor links and information from that instructor tab that we looked at earlier. And they can click on instructor calendar here, and it'll take them exactly the same place as that calendar link did a moment ago. And again, they can click on their on their class. So. Let's stop that. Now, not everybody wants to decrease their instructor access. Sometimes we want some people to have increased access. And you can do this in order to give instructors the ability to see user accounts, to edit classes or create classes, to edit or create courses. You have to go through and assign them some additional permissions in order to do that instructor here and get her back in place where I can edit her. One of the most frequent requests we get is for instructors to be able to see lab instances. Now every instructor assigned to a class can monitor labs and that's looking at the active lab instances that are running at that time. But what they can't see at all are lab instances that have been taken previously or canceled or completed. So they can't see all of the labs the student has taken for, for the class or for any other time. 
So in order to do that, what we need to do is add another role for the instructor. And anybody who has the operations manager role has the ability to do this. So if I go in and edit my user and choose a roles, the roles tab, I can assign a role. And from here, I'm going to add a lab uh, instance viewing role and click OK. Now, anytime that I'm going beyond what the instructor can do, whenever I add that role, I also need to add organization management. So where that use that instructor can have that access and, and work. So I'm only going to give them access to Google. There we go. Once I've done that, I do need to log out and log back in in order for those permissions to come into play for me. And now when I've logged in, I used to only see these six tiles. And now when I go down a little bit, I can see a few more. And one of the new tiles I have is labs. And I can click on find lab instances now. And this does not limit me to seeing just things from my class or a class that I've taught or have taught me. It lets me see all lab instances for, for all users in my organization where I've been given access to weeks. I can see all the information. I can see which lab series they used, what the student's name was. I can come over and see when they started and finished that lab. I can add some output options as well to be able to see if it was an exam lab, whether they passed it, what their score was. Once I add more output options or columns, I hit search in order to be able to see that information. You can see this one was a lab exam, and I can go to details here. And I can see for all labs, you can see this basic information on what platform they were on, what um, completion status is when they started, how long they were in the lab. Down here, you can see the progress in terms of how much they completed and then their scores. Because it's an exam lab, you can also see the scoring information. And then you also get the questions and results on that exam as well. That gives your instructors access to see all lab instances, and they can take a look at all the information for the users. One other thing you can do as an operations manager, I can come in and I can assign a temporary role. When I go into my user and click on the roles tab, you can see that here we have duration for the roles. You can set up a, an instructor, and maybe you have an instructor who's coming in. They're only going to be working for you for a short amount of time, but you need to give them the instructor role so that they can prepare for the class and run the class when they're here. If you uncheck that permanent box, you can set the start and end dates for that access. So, Let's say that they're going to be with us for a few weeks in February. Okay. And then I want it to expire not in July. It always defaults to six months. But let's say they'll be with me for a little while. So I'll, I'll set this. So this way I know that my instructor set up. I know what dates that they're going to have access. I don't have to worry about doing it at the last minute or remembering to remove their access at the last minute. And that'll change their, um, their access for you, and you do not have to assign permanent roles for everyone. Another type of instructor we have is part of our contract instructor pool. So we have these instructors that are interested in having free access to our Microsoft official curriculum or to Veeam Labs. We have two different contractor groups for those. And if they already have a user account in the system, they can go into their user profile and on the instructor information tab, they can check this box to opt in as a contract instructor. At that point, they'll be contacted by our help desk in order to make sure that they, if they want access to the Microsoft official curriculum and that they'll need to have an MCP and it needs to be valid and we do check that can't be expired. If they want access to Veeam Labs, that has to be approved through Veeam, and then they can be added to that pool. 
and both of those access to those labs that can run any labs that we have, and those are free. As an organization, you can have access to view those, those users by going to your organization profile, clicking on edit, going to your preferences tab, and you're going to scroll down here to class settings. And down on the bottom of class settings, you have an option to opt in to using contract instructors. And when you click on that, you'll have access to C contract instructors. How does that work for you then? If I go to find instructors here, you can get an example, and I hit search, I'll see 1,200 instructors. And you can see a lot of these guys don't have any organization listed. I can add a filter for organization and choose my own organization. And I only see 18 of these instructors and I can see which organization they belong to. And they're my instructors that I have that I manage. And if I click on the link here, I can uh, get to their instructor profile. If I say does not belong to my organization, I see a whole lot of other instructors. And here I can't open their instructor profile at all. I can see additional information about them, but a limited amount of information. I can see their email, we can see a phone number, uh, city, state, zip code, country, and any of the information on that in, uh, instructor information tab that was listed and that they are indeed a contract instructor. And those are all output options that you can choose to show or not show. You do have access and limited access to some information about them to be able to contact them. How can I find something that an instructor can teach? I'm going to show you a filter and then I'm going to show you how it's set up. But you see here I have an attended course, certified for course, and prepared for course. So I can I can filter by any of these. I'm going to go to certified for course, choose one and click OK. And now it's going to show me anybody who is certified to teach the LODS demo course that does not belong to my organization. And these are, he's not under Career Rocket, he's an outside organization, my boom instructor, and there's another one who actually has access to, to teach that. And so I can see those two, and I can also see ones that belong to my organization that are certified to teach it. And I have Allison in there who is certified to teach it. So I can find people that are certified for teaching um, specific courses. Let's look at another place where you can see this, and that is when you're adding an instructor to a class. And I edit the class here, and I'm going to go down to instructors and add instructor. And you can see here I have several different um, filters that have showed up. One is belongs to Career Rocket include children. And another one is certified for course, that they're certified to teach the course. And by default, you are always going to have does not have a schedule conflict show up. But these other two right here, you can choose whether or not they show on, on this choose instructor um, box when you open it. And that is a setting over here again in your organization on the preferences tab down here on class settings. So they're right above that uses contract instructor and you can show an instructor certification filter or show the instructors outside my organization. So those are both people have. Uh, Allison has a conflict, but if I remove that, she shows up. And if I choose does not belong to Career Rocket, I should see my other two guys. So it's possible to be able to schedule people in based on those filters and find them easily. So what are competencies and how do I set them up? So they can be set up for your contract instructors and they can also be set up for your own organization instructors. And you're going to go to that instructor profile and you're going to click on the instructor competencies link under instructor information. And from here, it opens my competencies, and I can choose to add course competencies. And I can select all of them if I'd like and click OK. And here's where the attended, prepped, and certified filters come into play. So I can say that I have attended 
most of those. It's a list of things that I want my uh, manager to do or my instructor to do. And I can say which ones I'm certified for as well. So I can set these up uh, in order to be able to use them to find instructors much more easily. There's no save on here, but at this point, Instructor Jane is now certified to teach the top three courses. One other thing I'd love to show you is instructor blockout times. So instructor blockout times allow a user, the instructor themselves, or an administrator to come in and set up times when the instructor will not be available to be scheduled. For instructor Jane, she has only one set up for a doctor appointment. And if I go back and look at her calendar, um, I have a blockout time set up. And this works just like a class that's been set up. When I go to uh, schedule, schedule that instructor in for a class, it's going to read as a conflict for them, and it will not show them automatically unless you remove that conflict filter on the add instructor chooser. So these can are ways that you can set up vacations for people. You can set up any kind of, I want it just to be her. You can set up vacations, appointments, other times when you're not going to be able to use an instructor and have that blockout time set up for them. And that will help you with not double booking them when they're not available. Another place you can take a look at your calendars in a big picture is from My Organizations. And under My Organizations, you're going to get a list of any organization that you manage. And if you click on the name of that organization, it's going to take you to that organization profile. But below it, we have some calendar links, and we have a calendar for the entire organization. And on here, I can see any of the classes that are scheduled. And if an instructor is scheduled for that class, I can see that as well. I can also open these the classes from here if I want and make changes. You can also come out and uh, see an instructor calendar. They have a room calendar in case you're using physical classrooms that you can see. On the instructor calendar, this shows you each instructor for your organization and each day of the week, and you can see who is actually um, scheduled and what they're scheduled to teach. So it's another way to look at your, your people. Last two things I just want to mention to you are that you can set up automated notifications for instructors. Those can be created. You have the permissions and the authority to create automated notifications. You can have create a notification plan that will send out an email to instructors when they are added to a class, when they're removed from a class, if a class has been canceled, and there are some other options available as well. Thank you for joining us for the webinar, and we hope to see you again at another one soon.